into the train editor, hit P to go to points, and I'm going to um, I'm going to place the point here because if I place one here and then order them to move here and then after order them to move here, if I had a point here and it went like that, it's going to look too uh, too candid. So I'm just going to get him to go straight attack move to point one. Uh, so back to triggers. Uh, change this thing that I just copy pasted to be unit I issue order order switch to value specter to and then click the left bracket left of ability command to change it to an order targeting point and let's search for attack which is going to technically be attack move and the point is going to be point zero zero one and that's good so this is good and then now we need a new trigger I control W over here and then say enters cam region 01 uh, event control W uh, unit unit enters region any unit enters value cam trig 1 condition comparison um, and then click on the left bracket here on owner of triggering unit and then change it to unit uh, uh, let's see, where is it? How do I just check unit is? Well, hmm. you could do unit type of unit and check that the type is specter. Um, how do I just, is there a way to just Hmm. Is there a way to just check that it's an exact unit? And I'm learning right now, as you can see. Uh, oh, I think I can just go uh, triggering unit. There we go. Triggering unit equals equals. And then here you find specter. Triggering unit means entering unit. And what we're going to do is control W. We're going to camera, apply camera object, apply camera 2, which is the overhead camera for player. And you'd have to loop through again, like I said on the first one, for each player. Or you could just copy paste this and do it for each player uh, over 0 seconds because we want it to be a straight cut at 100% velocity, 0% deceleration. And then, la, 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 let's see, hopefully that will undo the following. Uh, the following of the unit so it'll stop following and just apply this camera and then camera apply right after that immediately we want to apply camera 3 for each player again uh, over let's say five seconds and this number is based on real time not uh, not game time so while game time if it's in faster mode will be 33 percent faster this will always be five real seconds so uh, you could I believe in here we could if you really needed the timing to be exact so you don't I mean everybody plays on faster so you could just gauge it around that but uh, you can always just do game set game speed and set it to normal for the duration of the cinematic and then when the cinematic ends set it back to faster uh, that's an option so I'll just leave mine on normal uh, so apply camera 3 over let's say yeah 5 seconds could fail though so we'll find out and that's good and then we're gonna do a general a uh, wait, a new action, a uh, wait, and we're going to wait five real time seconds. So this action is going to happen. Then we need to wait five seconds until the camera finishes panning for that five. Se well, it's going to apply camera three, which makes it look like it's panning. Um, and then after that, we want to apply camera four for player one over zero. So we want instant. And I'm going to go copy paste this follow thing. So after we apply camera 4, then we want to go back to following him. Um, and I hope that doesn't mess up the target when we do that. And uh, so I actually didn't need this region, so let's delete that. Hmm. That worked out well. Uh, so why don't we go in game and just figure out what the hell is going to happen with this. Okay, so he took the quick route, which was around the back which I should block off and now he's fighting the Zergling so uh, we have to go completely restart this and figure this out
Uh, okay, so uh, back in terrain here, we need to get T to go back to terrain and cover this area up. Uh, did I? No, I didn't remove that circling good. Okay, I'm going to do this right to the edge of the map so he can't pull any more tricks like that on me. Damn Spectre. Thinks he's so smart going around the back there. Um, Alright. And the other thing I forgot to do was that in here... Um, well, we have to end this cinematic at some point. So let's end the cinematic when all the Zerglings are dead. So uh, make a new trigger. Um, and sign event unit dies and unit dies and then conditions uh, we're going to count the number of number of units in unit group number of living uh, units in region matching condition um, so we're going to check zergling units in the entire map. So you make sure you have no other ones though, owned by player uh, 15. Um, matching that with at most any amount equals equals zero, or just to be safe, less than or equals. So when the when a unit dies, oh and uh, we need to also check that the, uh, the unit type is a zergling. Unit, unit type there we go. Unit type of triggering unit, which is the dying unit, equals equals zergling. So, we, and then just to be safe, let's put these in an and, meaning they both have to be true for the conditions to pass. So, unit dies and both of these are true. So it's a zergling and that there's zero zerglings left in the map, which means zer zero zerglings alive left in the map, which means it's the last zergling dying. Um, we can turn off this trigger is the first thing we're going to do so that later on it won't accidentally get run and we should actually uh, turn off this one right away so that it never gets run again and in here so we turn this trigger off copy paste um, and now we need to end the uh, here we go cinematic mode we need to turn cinematic mode off for all players and then you need to apply the default camera back for all players apply the default game camera for and you have to do a loop again here over you know two seconds make it actually uh, a little bit smooth here and actually just actually we'll set this to 100 again and we'll leave some deceleration and we'll include target and then uh, you could pan their camera after this or do whatever you wanted so it's up to you after this this is basically when the cinematics over and I think that's uh, good oh actually now I wonder if we uh, we can unexplore the map visibility unexplore the area um, change visibility so you have to do this for each player to unexplored within entire map and do check cliff level and uh, let's see so hopefully that'll that'll fix this actually I think we have to store this revealer in a variable. Um, oops, don't control W. We need to make a new variable and store it so that we can remove it later. Otherwise, it'll always be displaying the map visibility. So let's uh, sign revealer of type R revealer. And right after we create it, let's go variable, set variable. Click on variable, set sign revealer to equal uh, function last created revealer. So it's set now, and then in the end of the cinematic, before we do the visibility thing, let's destroy the revealer. Destroy the sign revealer, and then we'll unexplore the map. And hopefully this all works, so let's go in game and find out.